Yeah, it's not a problem, I'll be with you now. I wouldn't mind, Mum, I've got a bit of a sore throat. Just want to thanks, Alice. Thank you. Get the sniffs. Hello. 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 The Babson's Guild of Glasgow. Also, where you'll find the Glasgow Chamber of Commerce, which is the oldest in the world. However, our most important building is across the square to the right. This is the Glasgow City Chambers, Glasgow's Town Hall. It's the most recent in a variety of town halls in the city over the centuries, designed in the entire from the beginning, the next stop is number two, Glasgow Cathedral. Remember, you can't get on and off the bus at any of the official 21 stops along the route. Anywhere you do, second, founded as the Andersonian Institute in 1796. It was actually founded as an academic rival to Glasgow University, the oldest of the three. Looking directly ahead of you, at the far end of the road, a large hospital complex in Glasgow Royal Infirmary. And it was in the older part of the hospital in the 1860s that Joseph Lister pioneered the use of antiseptics in surgery. The hospital also pioneered a brain surgery, carrying out the world's first successful brain operations, and the hospital also pioneered a modern nursing technique. Kind in the world, three floors inside, full of religious artifacts and information relating to the world's main religions. You can also see Salvador Dali's very famous painting, Christ of St. John of the Cross, owned by Glasgow Museums. In a small building coming up on the right, the province lordship, the oldest surviving house in Glasgow, dating to 1471, now a centre of medieval life. Came here from the east coast of Scotland, from Curis and Fife, and founded a small religious community, more or less, with a cathedral now stands. Kent died in 603, was made a saint, becoming known as Saint Mungo, which means beloved one. He is now the patron saint of Glasgow. We'll find a huge amount of construction work taking place all over the city, particularly along the River Clyde. The process of reinventing itself for being seen as the world's first successful post industrial city. So, major investment in Glasgow resulting in all this building work. 1451. The university stood here until the mid 19th century, but by that time this area became very run down, and the land for the year of the university grounds becoming increasingly industrialised. So it was decided to move the university from here to a new site on Gilmore Hill in the West End that was completed by 1870. All booth a much larger building, which at that time housed the town hall, the jail and the courthouse. The rest of the toll booth, like a lot of old Glasgow, was demolished a long time ago. Coming left on in more recent years, the venue for the annual World Fight Band Championships, rock festivals, a whole variety of events are staged here throughout the year. The council today is spending around £15 million upgrading the park and its facilities. Over to your right, the People's Palace Museum, the Social History Museum of Glasgow, the Winter Garden and Cafeteria to the rear. The recently fully restored and rebuilt Dalton Fountain from 1888. The structure represents the British Empire at the time, standing 50 feet high, 70 feet across at the base, it is the biggest terracotta fountain in the world. Restoration and rebuilding cost three and a half million pounds. From the invasion of England. Thus, we're talking about. 
first set of the Merchants Guild, dates in the mid 1600s. Between us and the clock tower, a new High Court building from the 1980s, a touch of the High Court to your left from 1814. But directly across the road, between the two legal buildings, is a small mortuary standing on a site of Jocelyn Square. site of Paddy's Market, Glasgow's Flea Market, operates Monday to Saturday, finishing early afternoon, so it's all be clear away now. Yep. Back across the river to the left, the Glasgow Central Mosque, the first purpose-built mosque in Scotland, but it opened in 1985. Now the river Clyde is Glasgow's principal river, which flows westwards, the direction ahead of you. Further down the river, the Clyde starts to get wider and wider, and many miles further on becomes a very wide river indeed by the time we reach the sea on the west coast. It is therefore a tidal river, at the moment we're halfway between high and low tide. Now this area around here is called the Brigate or Bridge Gate, meaning the way to the bridge. The bridge in question being the original medieval bridge of stood on our left, before being replaced by this current Victoria Bridge in the 1850s. Medieval Glasgow was a very small town indeed, it had no defensive wall, but it did have four principal gateways called ports leading in and out, the north, south, east and west ports. Also to the left, the biggest glass building in Europe is the Enoch Shopping Centre. Oh, okay. We're only seeing one section of it at the moment. The rest is to the rear, out of sight. The building to the right of it, the Debenham Department Store. Both buildings are connected, so you can't walk from one to the other. And to an immediate left, the Trades Hall, 1791, designed by the great Scottish architect Robert Adam. We have heard of Adam's style on the sea, one of our great founder Scottish architects. And also around this area, we have lots of very expensive clothes shops. stopping for a moment here and continuing westwards, followed by Glasgow. The city was also known as the workshop of the empire, so they built to show off the wealth and power of Glasgow accordingly, reflected in our buildings. So look above you, a lot to see up there. And just over to our left of the corner there, the Cadora building from 1872, designed by Glasgow architect John Honeyman modelled on the original Cadoro, the Golden House in Venice. Wow. Oh, yeah. On Street, this is Glasgow's Holy Bridge. Underneath here in the early days of the station was a traditional meeting place for people from the highlands and islands of Scotland. Because of a shelter from Lazo's traditional wonderful weather, the bridge became known as the Highland Man's Umbrella. There's <laughs> <laughs> a warehousing lining both sides of the river beyond. There's beyond for short term and long term storage of goods. Plus, many other buildings are to the various passenger developments taking place. I mentioned, remember, auditorium known as the armadillo because that's exactly what it looks like but designed as a series of ship's bows pointing skywards was well next to the river flight Plaza Hotel and the Science Centre Complex, which we reached the Crossing of Bells Bridge on the left, 
one of two pedestrian bridges there on both of which open. Sorry, that new building being erected down the river ahead of you on the right is uh, another casino. Three or four storey buildings, a common entrance, staircase, two or three flats, that's apartments at each level. That is a tenement, it does not apply anything else. Ahead of you to the left of the trees, statue of a seated figure. This is Lord Kelvin, the great Glasgow professor, regarded as one of the greatest scientists in the 19th century. He's a man who discovered absolute zero, so the term degrees Kelvin comes from. He developed the principles for refrigeration, giving the world refrigeration, hence Kelvinators. Modern form of compass used in the world today, Lord Kelvin. We're now in Glasgow University, and again to remind you, founded 1451. Building to your right, the older of the two student unions, and the gatehouse to our left, one of the surviving original structures. So everything you're seeing left and right going up the hill and down the far side is all part of the university complex covering the entire Gilmore Hill area. Now, this being the Christmas holidays, Glasgow University is a close. Nothing's open. You can take a wander through the grounds if you wish. The building to the left will find the University Zoological Research Centre, built in a working building, but within it is a public zoological museum. Yeah, I'm that last week. So, there are more graduates from a population throughout the area than anywhere else in Great Britain. So very popular academic assisting and media oriented the area, the Lions Road here very much the heart of the West End. Lawrence, Papa used to live there. The West End just go for a wander. Should I put it in the hoops? More university buildings to our left, including the gatehouse, converted to a family council and vice centre. Recrossing the River Kelvin, the Transport Museum on the right, housing a magnificent transport collection, That's very, very brilliant. extensive, including upstairs in the museum, the Clyde Room, containing the largest ship model collection in Great Britain, plus lots of information on Clyde shipbuilding. Is that open again yet, John? Coming up. On to Sucky Hall Street, taking us back into the city centre. Gets his name from two Scottish words, Sucky and Hall, meaning a willow meadow. Organisation to get Sucky Hall Street or Willow Meadow Street. This used to be the residential stretch of Sucky Hall Street, the Royal Crescent to the left from 1839. The entire area through here, possibly Glens Hill, were developed as very fashionable parts of town in the early to mid 19th century. But as the city boundaries have pushed further and further outwards, particularly to the west, so the wealthy of the stages were moving outwards as well. Selling the terrace, you can see the three spires of Trinity College, it's an ex theology college, now converted to flats. Cherry Cross, the Cherry Cross Mansions ahead of you, very elegant tenement properties designed by the Glasgow architects of J.J. Burnett in 1891 for French influence on the roof structure. And a few seconds walk down the street to our media right brings you to the Mitchell Library, the biggest public reference library in Europe. On to the commercial search of Sunky Hall Street and stop number 18. Just to our left, the Regimental Museum of the Royal Highland Fusiliers, Glasgow's Regiment. The museum is open to the public Monday to Friday, closing at 4 o'clock, but like other places, shut for Christmas. Up the original building by Charles Henry McIntosh. And across the road ahead of you to the right in the pedestrian precinct, Charles A. McIntosh's Willow Tea Room. Glasgow Film Theatre, small independent specialist cinema, around 60% of the films are show for it. Danielle, Megan, give us the...
Valley, just beyond it, the College of Pipe and the National Bagpipe Centre. I've been in that as well. We did a union at Charlotte Street in the Bagpipe Centre. We used to have lunch in the Bagpipe Centre. Next on our right, the Pavilion Theatre, another of Glasgow's many theatres, the city does have a very strong theatrical tradition. And rising above us to the right, the tallest cinema complex in the world, the 18 cinema screens, four bar lounges, one of which is a comedy club. Next stop, 21, the uh -huh, bus yeah. station. The entire building stands in a bed of sprung rubber to cut out the noise of vibrations from underground chains, the subway system. The John Lewis, the Palmer store to the right, the top end of the Buchanan Gallery shopping complex, another major retail development running from here down Buchanan Street, various others beyond it. And just beyond the bus station, that area of modern buildings in the background up to your left forms the central part of the Glasgow Caledonian University, the city's third university, a most recent time still expanding. What were you, Megan? Do you want to go round again? <laughs> Is that a no girls? Coming back to George Square to complete the tour, there are 12 statues here. The tall column in the middle has a figure on top of Sir Walter Scott, the great Scottish novelist, poet, historian, father of European historic fiction. Father of European historic fiction. Lower down facing you, William Ewart Gladstone, a four times Prime Minister of Britain during the 19th century. Born in Liverpool in England of Scottish parents. The Gladstone family were from the northeast of Scotland, the Angus area. He was also rector of Glasgow University on three occasions. Century. And follow over to the right, the Cenotaph, the War Memorial, designed by J.J. Burnett. It was officially unveiled in 1924 by Field Marshal Errol Haig. Field Marshal Haig was the Scottish military leader of the First World War, Commander-in-Chief of the Western Front Allied Forces from 1915 to 1918. 